Good morning and welcome to our homestead. We have a very important subject to talk about today, and that is soil. Trying to grow things in your homestead garden is always a challenge. And if you've got bad soil, it makes it a thousand times harder. So today we're gonna compare good soil with bad soil and the characteristics of both. We've got a side-by-side -side comparison of good soil and bad soil in our greenhouse and how it has affected some of our tomatoes. And as a bonus, towards the end of the video, we're gonna talk about some tomato plant nutrient deficiencies and what that looks like. And we're also gonna talk about some tomato plant diseases. Let's get going. It's all about balance. Balance is unbelievably important when we are talking about soil. A balance of organics and inorganics. Now when I'm talking about inorganics, of course I mean minerals, dirt, rocks, crushed up rocks, sands, things like that. And then when I'm talking about organics, I'm talking about living organics like microbes and bacteria as well as compost in various stages of decomposition. From humus all the way up to fresh compost like a cover crop that you've chopped and dropped. Your plants need all of those together. It's a symbiotic relationship and they all work in concert with one another. Let me explain that a little further. Your most productive agricultural soils are going to have between three and six percent organic matter versus inorganic matter. And that's really important because there is a whole living world below the soil surface. So I talked about beneficial microbes and bacteria, but there is also a network of fungi that connect roots of plants together. Now those beneficial bacteria consume the inorganics in the soil, as well as nitrogen from the air and carbon from the air, and their byproducts make bioavailable nutrients for your plants. So let's take nitrogen for example, if it just comes from the air into the soil, then your plants can't use it. It must be broken down by those beneficial bacteria. Those bacteria essentially just poop out the good stuff, the good nitrogen, nitrites and nitrates that your plants can use. Now some plants can take that nitrogen up if it's right next to their roots. However, if it's further away from the plant roots, there needs to be some sort of transport system for the bacteria to take it to those plant roots. And that is where the fungi come in. So as a plug for no-till, that network of fungi and those microbes need to remain in the soil and undisturbed. That's the natural order of things. That's how it was designed by God. Now those beneficial bacteria, microbes, and fungi need something to feed themselves as well. Some of that comes from the inorganics in the soil, but most of it comes from the organics. The compost, the humus, the organic matter that is breaking down in the soil in various stages. So if you have a very poor soil, it is devoid of a lot of those things that I just talked about. It doesn't have the organic matter in it that your microbes and your beneficial bacteria and your fungi need to feed off of and then also to assist the plants. You have to get that organic matter in the soil to change things. Now these garden beds are only about a year and a half old and if you want to see our video on the ones that we chose, the installation of them and what we filled them with, click on the video at the top of the screen. You can see I've got this interplanted with eggplants and lettuce and that lettuce is about ready to be harvested. The one in the background I didn't harvest last year and it's going to seed, but I'm going to save those seeds. Now it's important that whatever soil you start with, that you have enough organic matter in it. But what's important to understand is that over time, your plants and the beneficial microbes and fungi and bacteria in the soil are going to be breaking this down and using a lot of those nutrients. So it's extremely important that you feed your soil. Now let me show you two of the things that we do to feed our soil. You can see here, this is an old stalk from, I believe it was a Brussels sprout last year. And we just clipped this off at roughly soil level. We left this organic matter in the soil for all that soil biology to feed on. Additionally, back here in the bed by our Nero de Toscana uh, kale, you can see that we've got a lot of old material from the plants that has fallen down. And we leave this here to feed the soil. So we've got earthworms in here, which also are really important to the process. And they come up, they'll feed on this. So you don't wanna miss this. I'm gonna talk about the three important things that good soil does. 
Then in a few minutes, I'll talk about these beautiful tomato plants right behind me. Okay, so there are three categories of good soil that I'm gonna talk about. One is physical benefits, one is chemical benefits, and one is biological benefits. So the physical benefits of good soil are that it helps enhance aggregate stability. So those inorganics, it's gonna to help to stabilize that soil. So you think of a sand dune, it's completely unstable, but a good soil is stable. It's gonna improve water infiltration and aeration in the soil. And at the same time, it's gonna help with water retention for your plants so that it doesn't dry out really fast. And then it also helps with soil compaction. And that is really important if you're growing crops, like root crops, like carrots and things like that. They cannot grow in a very hard soil. Let's talk about the chemical benefits of a good soil that has the proper ratio of organics to inorganics. One is that it will hold on to nutrients longer in the soil. Your basic nutrients, your calciums, your magnesiums, nitrogens, all of that. And the next one spans chemical to biological because it will help mineral decomposition over time. And that is because those beneficial bacteria are in there decomposing those minerals. But if you don't have enough organic matter, then you aren't gonna have enough bacteria to break down those inorganics. And then of course the biological benefits, like I just talked about, it has food available for your microorganisms. And when you have a larger, more enhanced microbial diversity in the soil, that helps with pests and diseases because your plants have the proper nutrients to ward off those pests and diseases. Good balanced soils will also have a stable pH and it doesn't fluctuate a lot if that percentage remains in that range that I told you about, three to six. Now that I have explained everything about good soil, you can deduce what a bad soil is. It's just devoid of everything that a good soil has. But a lot of people don't understand that a bad soil can be too much organic matter. And I'm gonna show you that with relation to two separate areas where I planted tomatoes in my greenhouse. The tomato plants behind me have been in the ground for about three and a half weeks. And they were starts inside and they were about a foot tall when I put them in the ground. You can see these are beautiful, green. They're already setting flowers out and they are hopefully gonna produce some tomatoes really quickly. And I do need to get this trellis up. But these are in one of the old beds here in my greenhouse that I've been building and feeding the soil for over a year and a half. So you've seen these beautiful tomatoes. Now let me show you some tomatoes that were started at the same time and planted at the same time here in the greenhouse. And then I will explain what is wrong with them and what is wrong with their soil. Look at these thin, sickly looking tomato plants. They're only about 18 inches tall, most of them. That one's shorter, that one's a little shorter. This one is, of course, an experiment to see a change in this plant versus its brothers and sisters here. And then you can see our lettuce that we planted here is also struggling really bad. So this center bed I put in just recently, and I put it in for these tomatoes specifically so that I could trellis them up to the center purlin in our greenhouse. And if you haven't seen my series on building this greenhouse by myself, click on them at the top of the screen. But I really wanted to get this bed in. These are my indeterminate tomatoes, so they will vine up all the way to the ceiling. And I was hasty and I bought soil, or what I thought was soil. So I'm gonna show you the bag. This is all natural, in-ground garden soil, organic, and it says it's for herbs and vegetables, so on and so forth. Yeah, I know that that was a mistake and I should have mixed it with some other inorganics because this is almost entirely compost. It is not broken down very well and it looks like it's a lot of wood chips, very small ones, and some leaves, but it is devoid of a lot. So like I said, you have to have that balance between inorganics and organics. And that's where this experiment came in. This is my garden soil from my big garden right next to the greenhouse. And this tomato is greener, it's putting out flowers already, and it's sprouting from other places on here. So I know that it's the soil. Now, what is wrong with these tomatoes? What is deficient in this 
soil. I think it's a bunch of different issues. And what I've been doing is watering these with a fish hydrosylate, and that should give them enough nitrogen or to boost the nitrogen for them to green them up. Yet they are not greening up that quick. So it probably is a nitrogen deficiency coupled with a few different things. So if you see your leaves are yellowing, it could be nitrogen deficiency, it could be an iron deficiency, or it could be a potassium deficiency. It depends on the leaves. If they are younger leaves and you've got green veins with a yellow leaf uh, structure, then that'll be an iron deficiency. If you've got older leaves toward the top that are yellow with green veins, then you are going to have a potassium deficiency. And then a completely yellow leaf is going to be a nitrogen deficiency. And if your young leaves at the top are very pale, then that means it's a calcium deficiency. And then one more color. If there's any purple on the leaf or around the edges or in the veining, that's a phosphorus deficiency. I don't have that, but I've got some browning of leaves at the bottom. If there are dark green spots on your leaves, that means it could be a zinc deficiency. Now, if your soil is unhealthy, your plants are going to be unhealthy. So disease and pests can attack really quickly on an unhealthy plant. So there are a lot of diseases that will attack your weakened tomato plants. Septoria leaf spot, verticillium wilt, or early blight. And I think I've got some of that on here as well. There's also a general leaf curl that will happen on the tomato leaves. And that's just from being really stressed out environmentally. Then you can also have spider mites on your young tomato plants. Check for small brown dots all over the leaves and check for little thin webs on them as well. And then of course, over or under watering a plant will also stress it out and cause a bunch of different issues. So for tomatoes, there's a lot of things you need to look out for. These obviously need help and I need to figure out what that is, starting with the soil. So it would be fruitless for me to spray stuff on the plant without changing the soil because it's just gonna go back to that poor state that it was in before and just waste the spray that I'm spraying on it. Yeah, I can spray some copper on here to try and control the uh, septoria leaf spot or whatever it is, but that's not going to solve a problem. That's putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to look in the description below for links to things like our greenhouse. Now go click on this video right here, which shows you how we are making a very powerful healing soil amendment. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.